plyometric training is one of the training methods that VCAR like to target and ask specific questions on. It's a little bit more complex than some of the others. Um, you need to know that it aims to improve speed, agility and muscular power. Um, most specifically, it aims to increase the power generated by the muscles. And a really good way of thinking about that is using that alliteration of power and plyometrics. So P for plyometrics and P for power. And it does so by improving the neural pathways. So that's the neuromuscular pathways, the brain sending message to the muscle, and likewise, the muscle sending a message back up to the brain or to the spinal cord. It also aims to um, increase efficient fiber recruitment and the rate of firing as well. So that's message messages being sent out from the brain. And it's an example of a plyometric training um, session just underneath or a training activity. So firstly, what we need to look at before we understand how plyometric training works is we need to review the concept of muscle contraction. So we're going to look at three types of muscle contraction here. First of all, an isometric contraction, and that's a muscle contraction where the muscle does contract, but that there's no movement or there's no change in the muscle length. So just holding that dumbbell as the um, figure is demonstrating, just holding that still is an isometric contraction. It's contraction, but there's no movement or no change in length length of the muscle. The type of contractions that we generally talk about are called isotonic contractions. And there's two that we can talk about, a concentric contraction and an eccentric contraction. The first one that we're looking at here is a concentric contraction, and it's where the muscle changes length and the muscle gets shorter. So we're looking at the bicep muscle here, and you can see that as the movement occurs, it's flexion and the dumbbell is coming towards the shoulder. The muscle is changing length and the muscle is actually pulling on that bone and pulling it towards um, the shoulder. So the muscle is getting shorter and that's a concentric contraction. On the other hand, when we get a lengthening of the muscle, it's still an isotonic contraction, but it's an eccentric contraction or a lengthening of the muscle. And just a funny way that I remember it is I think lengthening is LE for lengthening and that E is eccentric contraction. So if that helps you, then um, feel free to use that one. So what we're seeing now is we're seeing the dumbbell moving away from the body, so it's extending from the elbow and the bicep, it's contracting because it's still needing to provide a force to be able to deal with that load, um, but it's lengthening at the same time. So it's it's being stretched out, but it's contracting. So it's a isotonic contraction, but it's an eccentric contraction when we're lowering that dumbbell away from our shoulder. So plyometric training utilizes these two isotonic contractions. It utilizes the eccentric followed by a concentric. And just to go over the concept again, we're now looking at the deltoid, which is the muscle on the top of the shoulder there. And in the top figure, the arms being held straight out. So that's an isometric contraction, a still contraction. The second or in the middle, the arm is being lifted from a position to the side of the body out towards the side. So it's being abducted is the term we use. And you can see there that the deltoid looks like it's getting a little bit smaller and it's shortening. So that's a concentric contraction. An eccentric contraction in the bottom, you can see there's a little arrow there. I'll draw one in though. Um, the arm is starting out on, in a side raise, a lateral side raise, and then it's being lowered towards the body, and that's adduction. And you can see eccentric contraction, that the muscle is getting longer, or the deltoid is being stretched over that shoulder, and so that's an eccentric contraction. So plyometric training revolves a rapid eccentric, so a rapid lengthening, followed by a forceful concentric contraction. So let's have a little bit of a look at that in practice here. Let's just look at the A, B and C to start with. What you're looking at there and the muscle that we're focusing on is we're looking at the calf muscle, gastrocnemius there, and you can see that in the first stage it's heading towards the ground and the little bit that's sticking out is supposed to be the foot. Um, when it's landing, you can see that the calf muscle is actually being stretched and the tendon, the Achilles tendon that's attaching to um, the heel bone there is being stretched out. And then so that's an eccentric contraction. So it's a rapid eccentric contraction. And then as the body pushes off, that muscle shortens and that's the concentric contraction. 
And what happens when we're undertaking this sort of contraction is it utilises what's called the stretch shortening cycle. So when we lengthen a muscle out, we get elastic energy stored within that muscle and it's available for immediate use when the muscle is shortened. A really good way of thinking about this is like an elastic band. If you stretch out an elastic band and then let go, it recoils back quite quickly. So stretching the muscle out prior to shortening it increases the elastic energy, which is going to increase the force production and the power output. So that statement down the bottom is a nice statement there. Using a stretch immediately prior to a concentric contraction increases force production and power output. And power is the fitness component that we want to target or we are targeting, we are training during plyometric training, which is the training method. So what plyometric training also does is it trains this stretch reflex. So when we stretch our muscle, um, an impulse is immediately sent to contract the muscle to make it shorter. And that's a protective mechanism to avoid overstretching. So by repeatedly stretching our muscle, eccentric contraction, and then shortening it, we're actually training that reflex. And we're training those neuromuscular pathways. So the neurons, the messages being sent away from the muscle and towards the muscle actually get faster. And something else that's interesting to note is when an tendon is stretched, and a tendon is the really tough part that attaches a muscle to a bone, it recoils faster than a muscle. It's like an elastic band, and that too increases force production. So in the example below that we looked at, the Achilles tendon that attaches to the heel, that's going to have a lot of stored energy, and that's going to recoil really fast like an elastic band, and that's going to increase force production, and it's going to increase power output. So just a little bit of a guide to plyometric training and what I thought we might do, we might just flip to an example here. So we've got an example of a plyometric circuit and what you can see is the guy undertaking. If we just pause it there and if we just go back and have a look at that point there, if we're looking at the quadricep there, you can see that when he's landed, it's actually being stretched over the knee because it attaches at the tibial tuberosity down here. So it's actually being stretched over the knee and then that's eccentric contraction. And then when he jumps up, so he's landing, it's lengthening, eccentric, and then when he jumps up, it's going to be concentric contraction. We'll just go back to that point. Let's see if I can get it. No, I can't get it very well. Okay. So a couple of tips for plyometric training. So progress from low intensity to high intensity. And a low intensity plyometric training can be skipping um, all the way through to something more complex like the jumps that we saw below or perhaps box, box jumps. You also need to develop the skill of the exercise to make sure that the athlete can actually undertake the exercise before they start doing it um, with a lot of power and a lot of force. When fatigue interferes, you need to cease the exercise, can be associated with an increased risk of injury, particularly because you're training that stretch reflex. Um, it also should be undertaken um, by athletes who are over 16 years of age, and that, that's popped up in a question before. Um, and something else that's really important is to ensure that a rest day follows a heavy plyometric training session to allow recovery. When we have undergo that eccentric contraction, we can get tiny little muscle tears and that can lead to what's called delayed onset muscle soreness. So eccentric contraction is associated with delayed onset muscle soreness and that's those feelings that you have in your body when you're sore the next day, when it's hard to go downstairs or when it's hard to sit down, particularly in the quadriceps. We seem to get delayed onset muscle soreness there. So what you need to do is allow a day recovery uh, from that sort of training to allow those muscle fibres to uh, repair and so that they can increase strength, adapt, and so you can perform better.